You may be seated today. Give the band a great hand. They did a great job today leading us in worship. Please. Welcome all you watching on Facebook and live stream. Thank you so much for being a part. You are a part of the worship experience. Thank you so much for coming today at 1030. It's an honor to have you. Summer and I are honored that you show up, that you come, and that you trust us. And I also want to say thank you for your giving. Pastor Samaria did a great job today. Your giving is making a difference in our community. We're giving food away at the 12 o'clock worship experience we did last night too. And as she mentioned, the orphanage, um, I wanted her to tell that story. Um, you know, it's a raw story. This is, I mean, this is raw stuff, and we want to, you know, bless people that the Bible tells us to bless. I want to show a picture. Um, these are the actual children of um, the mother that passed, uh, that was in prostitution and died of starvation, and they're in our orphanage right now. Pastor Kim, of course, was there and visited them and led them all to Jesus. Isn't that awesome? That's awesome. And so thank you. Um, he preached last night, and they had over 30,000 people there, and um, they believe uh, they have altar workers, what they call prayer, you know, people there. About They believe about 15,000 people that night received Jesus. So uh, thank you for your giving. It's working here and uh, to other parts of the world. So isn't God good? I'm preaching uh, the first message in a quick series called Stretch Marks, and I want to preach today a message entitled Stretch Out. How many know that stretching is good every day that we live? And no one raised their hand. But like, for example, um, when we get up in the morning, it's good to stretch out, right? Yeah, as you get older, if you exercise or play sports, it's imperative that you stretch out. Or are you going to get hurt? Uh, have you ever been in a restaurant before, maybe especially for breakfast, and you're sitting next to someone or behind someone, and someone just stretches? And have you noticed that when we stretch, some people let out like weird grunts and, and noises? Have you been there before? It's kind of awkward. Uh, so we know that stretching is good. It's healthy. It's a part of our everyday life. But have you noticed that we resist many times, or I should say it's easy to resist stretching out when it comes to our faith, when it comes to our healing, when it comes to internal growth, because to stretch out invariably means we will feel awkward and we will feel uncomfortable. Most of us, when we feel those two things, stop and back up. But I believe there's great growth if we can press through and get on the other side. Amen? So no matter where you're at spiritually today, I believe it's imperative for all of us to stretch out. That's our next step and, and next phase in life. That's where growth is, blessing is, you know, maybe success, or who knows what you're believing for. When we stretch out, that's how we get there. So I pray that you would embra uh, embrace stretching out, but also that you would embrace the stretch marks that come with it. Amen? God has two great promises. I'll give you beauty for ashes and joy for your mourning. And then he says, great is his faithfulness. How many have received the faithfulness of God in your life? God is so good to us. So I'm reading a passage in Isaiah 54, verses 1 through 4. You can follow me on the screen if you want. I do just want to mention that verse 1 um, <clears throat> is my first point. I get my points right from the scripture. The Apostle Paul quotes this verse in Galatians chapter 4. So I want to give context. Um, we're going to apply it to our life and where we live, but also the application is Paul talked about Abraham, his first child, uh, he, he, he described was through a woman that was in bondage, and that represents the law, the Old Testament, all the rules that no one could obey enough to get right with God. But he had Isaac, and he was from uh, the free woman. His mother was, as the Bible says, the free woman, and that was by the Spirit of God that Jesus made a way for everyone through the cross. And so Paul quotes this verse in relationship to being bound versus being free in Jesus. But this also applies to our life. Notice in verse 1, sing, O childless woman, you who have never given birth, break out into loud and joyful song, O Jerusalem. You who have never been in labor for the desolate woman now has more children than the woman who lives with her husband, says the Lord. Enlarge your house, build an addition, spread out your home, spare no expense. For you will soon be bursting at the seams, and your descendants will occupy other nations and resettle the ruined cities. Everyone say, fear not. For you will no longer live in shame. Don't be afraid. There is no more disgrace for you. you. You will no longer remember the shame of your youth and the sorrows of widowhood. Everyone say, stretch out. Father, bless this third worship experience. In Jesus' name, everyone said. I believe verse 1 describes the struggle and the remedy that every one of us deal with and that every one of us can understand. Now, 
I want to give you practical things today. I don't want to leave you in ambiguity, but some of this is so practical it can make us awkward or uncomfortable, and I want to challenge us in these areas today. Notice in verse 1, he's speaking to the struggle. Obviously, he's speaking to Israel. This is referencing what I mentioned in in Galatians, but for all of us right now, too, I believe there's another application. Um, Some people have gone through life being childless, uh, struggling in that area of their life, and, and, and we give mercy and, 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 and compassion. But it's not just for women. Really, the struggle of life could be, oh, childless woman who have never given birth. It speaks to the disappointments of life. And every one of us have been disappointed. Every one of us can say, yes, I have been hurt. I have done wrong. I have been wronged. Every one of us can say we've lived long enough to have been let down by life. I think everyone deals with a common denominator in that we realize that life is not easy, life is difficult, and life throws this a lot of curveballs. How many have been there before? And so this is the struggle that we you know, deal with. Uh, life has let us down. I put down here, uh, you know, definitely maybe physically, uh, definitely relationally. Uh, in our country and really all the way back to the Middle East when Jesus was alive and, and even past that, uh, people have been let down racially with tension between different ethnicities. Um, It just goes on and on and on, not to belabor it, but we understand it. But then in the same verse, he gives us what I believe is the remedy. Notice he says, sing. Everyone say sing. And it's almost like an irony. Sing, O childless woman. Sing, you who are in sadness. Sing, you are, I mean, who are in depression. Sing, you are, I mean, uh, uh, you who are in sadness or whatever it is. Sing out loud. Notice he says, sing, and then he says, make a joyful and loud song. Now, I just mentioned that I'm going to give you practicality in this message about stretching out, and it's so basic that it can actually be like, are you kidding me? But ladies and gentlemen, when you and I are in the struggle of life, I believe we have a chance to stretch up and connect to God. There is great power when you and I sing praises to God. There is great power when you and I sing praises to God. This may be totally awkward right now, but be awkward with me. When you and I worship God, we don't worship God based on how we feel or what's going on. We worship him because of who he is. And if you and I can understand that there is power when you and I sing, I'm talking about singing by yourself, singing in your car, in the shower, singing at church, singing in your prayer time, worshiping God. This is so basic, but really you and I are tempted when we're in the struggle. How many know we're tempted to be ticked off? We're tempted to get mad, get mad at God, get mad at others, get frustrated, and and we're full of different emotions, and that's normal, and that's fine. But if we can also challenge ourselves to stretch up in the struggle, and even if we're child childless, barren, sad, depressed, hurt, angry, if we can sing and sing a loud and joyful song, I believe what the Bible says, he inhabits the praises of his people. So when you're at home and you start singing, God inhabits your house. When you're in your car, he inhabits your car. When you're in the shower, he inhabits the shower. Everywhere we go, folks, if you and I can practice the simple act of singing and worshiping God with a loud and joyful song, somehow our spirit will be lifted and our spirit will be exalted. The Bible speaks in the book of Acts, Paul and Silas were in prison at midnight and they sang and the jail was shaken and everyone was set free. In the Old Testament, there was a man named Jehoshaphat. His small nation was facing an army of three nations combined and he said, Lord, who should I send first? Should it be the Marines? Should it be the Navy SEALs, the Rangers or the the special ops? And God said, no, send the singers and the musicians. And I'm sure he was like, well, singers and musicians don't always look like they're tough. (laughs) Can I get a witness? Uh, but uh, don't be offended. I love the band. And so, but they went out and they started singing and they started praising God. And they just simply said this, God, you are good and the goodness of God endures forever. The mercy of God endures forever. And those three nations got confused and started killing each other. There's great power when you and I worship God. Notice here in the Hebrew, this word sing in verse 1 literally means in the Hebrew to sing joyful. And I started cracking up. It means to creak. So this to me speaks to those of us that can't sing. It's like we're creaking. Literally, it's what it means. And someone say, well, why is it so loud here in the music? Because we want it loud so you can't hear me and others sing and mess it up. So we have it loud enough where every one of us can shout and no one knows we're jacking it up because we got people up here that can sing. 
One weekend, Pastor Sean was standing next to me and I was singing loud. I was singing and he put his hand on me and said, that's good, Pastor David. Thank you. That's, that's so nice. <laughs> to sing. This is so basic. And I'm not trying to dumb this down, but that's what the scripture says. Sing, oh childless woman. Lift up your voice. Then he says, make a loud and joyful song. This speaks to our posture and our attitude. It speaks to our demeanor. Think about this. Stay with me. You and I, think about how emotional we respond emotionally all the time to entertainment. None of us, for example, go see Beyonce hoping that she performs halfway. We don't want her to twerk halfway. You pay for her to put on the full show and people shout and do whatever. For those of you, like, uh, maybe a country, Garth Brooks, uh, Blake Shelton, you didn't pay for them just to sing out, uh, you, know, uh, 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 uh. you paid for them to sing and perform. You know, we, we, I mean, think about when, I mean, if you remember this in the 80s, uh, how many remember when Michael Jackson did the moonwalk for the first time on TV? It was like Jesus came through and touched you. It was like floating on air. Right? We were, people respond, and people were going nuts. If you know in the 80s when he would do the moonwalk, girls and people would like think that Jesus Christ walked on water in front of them. Ah! We respond. You don't go to ACDC shows wanting this, uh, the lead singer to come out there and be like, thunderstruck, thunder, thunder. You pay to have them get jacked, so you get jacked. Ah! And God is saying, sing a loud and joyful song. How much more should we be loud and joyful for our God? He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he's speaking, he's speaking to an attitude. He's speaking to a demeanor. And so when you and I are in the struggle of life, I know this is awkward. Some of us aren't used maybe to how we do worship, and that's fine. I'm not criticizing you. But however, I am saying, and I'm challenging you, the Bible is full of verses. Make a loud and joyful noise. He gives you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. When we sing, he inhabits. When you sing, he listens. And so there is great power for every child of God to sing, not only in church, but on their own. And when you do, the Bible promises you he will lift you and he will be with you. The, and, and so the question is, will we stretch up in the struggle? Because in this verse, notice that all of a sudden he, uh, Israel goes from childless to begin to sing. For I'm going to give you so many sons and daughters, it's going to be bursting at the seams. This speaks to me that when we're in the struggle of life. When we stretch up, we connect to the God who can do what we can't do. And so when we're sad and depressed and overwhelmed and angry, if we will stretch up and we will say, you know what, I just, I'm going to choose to be goofy. I'm going to choose to believe the word of God. I'm going to worship when I don't feel it. I'm going to sing when I'm mad. I'm going to sing when I'm sad. I'm going to sing when I'm happy. I'm going to choose to worship God. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. If it had not been God who was on my side, I'm not waiting for Pastor Renee or Bruce. I'm, I, I don't have to wait for City's Praise Band. God has been so good to me. I'm just going to sing amazing up a song. I want to encourage everyone, guys, practice this and lift up a sound so will you and I stretch up in the struggle? Will we stretch up in the circumstance? This is our moment. This is our chance. And it may be uncomfortable, but do it because God will visit you. Then in verse 2 and 4, he talks about stretching out. When we stretch up, we connect to God. Sing, childless woman. Sing in your depression. Sing in your struggle. Sing in the, in the issues of life. Connect to God. He will be with you. And then he speaks of stretching out. Notice in verse 2 through 4, he says this. Enlarge your house. Make room. Spare no expense. Prepare for change. Prepare for something different to happen. I, and, and this speaks to preparation and expectation. Ladies and gentlemen, here's what I believe of faith here at City. I don't believe in the idea that I sit on a couch and I say, God, if you want to do it, you'll do it. I'm waiting on you to move. Here's what I believe from Scripture. The Bible says if I draw near to God, what will happen? He draws near to me. If I resist the devil, he will flee. And if I pursue God, he will pursue me. This is what the Scripture says. Well, that's not fair. Now, wait a minute. God took one step, two step, three step, four steps, five steps by coming to the earth, living like us, overcoming what we deal with, dying on the cross, and, and he tore the wall against us so that now everyone can come into the presence of God. And then guess what? Three days later, he was raised from the dead. He's already taken steps toward us. He wants us to take a step toward him. 
So you and I have the chance to activate our faith. Now I want to break this down. How do we enlarge our house? How do we spread out our home naturally? How does that work? For example, if you want to be married and you're believing God for a spouse, this may sound totally foolish to you, but this is not fantasy. This is the work of God. This is the way of God. This is not stupid. This is acting by faith. So if you want to have a spouse, I want to encourage you. If you have a roommate, just, you know, you know, uh, just clean your room. Prepare for your spouse. Clean your house. I'm expecting God to give me someone. Come to church and, and, you know, and look nice. Take a shower. Worship God. Look to your neighbor. Smile and shake their hand. It may be your spouse. You never know. But, 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 but are we okay, everyone? Someone got happy right there. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Felt Jesus come in the room. But, 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 but prepare. You say, well, I don't have a job. This may sound totally weird. Get up every day. Take a shower. Get dressed like you're going to work. Well, I don't have a job. But you're activating your faith. Faith is not passive. Faith is activating. We step out by faith. We step out. Please listen to me. This is where we get in trouble because faith doesn't have to give us a reason and faith does not make sense. He told a man to build a boat when there never had been rain that came from the sky. There was never need of a boat, uh, I mean for a storm, but Noah built a boat because he believed God. At some point in our life, you and I are gonna have to not understand it, not figure it out. We just have to walk by faith. Please hear me today. The enemy of faith is not fear. The enemy of faith is sight because you and I say, I can't see it. It's not happening. Happening. Nothing's changing, and my husband's still crazy, and my child is nuts, and God's not moving. See, sight is lying to you. I don't go by what I see. I go by what God is saying and doing in my life. I walk by faith, not by sight. So that doesn't mean I don't ignore my feelings. I understand it's still tumultuous. I understand it's a struggle, but I choose to believe God is greater than my issue. He's greater than my struggle. I choose to walk by faith. Maybe this is another example. Maybe your family is in discord and your family is in disarray and no one talks to each other and there is total upheaval, maybe for the holidays or maybe just for a dinner. This may sound totally crazy. You may be just with you and your spouse or totally by yourself. I want to encourage you to set the table as if all those loved ones would be at your house around the table. You may eat by yourself. And I just want to encourage you to say, I praise God that Billy's coming home. I thank you, Jesus, that Sally's coming home. My family shall be in unity. We shall be around this table. We shall love one another. We shall be in unity. We shall forgive one another. And some of you will say, well, this is just goofiness. No, it was goofy for Noah to build a boat, but when the rain came, he was in the boat and he was okay. It was silly for a teenager to chase a giant, but he was with God and God was with him. Folks, we we have to prepare and make a way for God to move. When we stretch up, we connect to God, then we stretch out. Here's another way to enlarge our house and spread out our home. How about we forgive someone, love someone, give to someone, stretch out to someone. Thank you for the great amen from my mom on the front row. You see, I want to read this. Our breakthrough and our answers are always connected to other people. Your answer to prayer, your breakthrough is always linked to other people. So when you and I are walking by faith and the scripture says, enlarge your home, spare no expense, spread it out, prepare. Why? Because he said in verse 3, the, uh, the descendants are going to occupy and you're going to be bursting at the seams. In other words, there's going to be provision. There's going to be a change in your situation. But you and I have to stretch up when we're in the struggle and begin to stretch out. And we do that by practical ways in terms of personally and relationally with other people. You see, so many of us hit awkwardness. We hit being uncomfortable with God, maybe even here at City, maybe you know, by ourselves. And when we hit those moments, we want to stop and back up. In our country, we have an awkwardness, and, there's an, and it's uncomfortable to discuss race in a civil manner. It's uncomfortable to discuss different political, social issues in a civil manner. People are just bickering and arguing. No one's listening to anyone because it's awkward and it's uncomfortable. But what if the Christians would say that I embrace being awkward, I embrace being uncomfortable, because when I'm in that place, God has new growth for me. When I'm in that place, if I will step through it, there's a new dimension for me. There's a new place for me. There's a new realm for me if I will break through and stretch out. So I ask you and myself, because I'm preaching to me here today, will you and I stretch out with God? Will we make room and say, God, I'm available, do something in my life, I'm here for you. 
We stretch out every morning, and it feels so good to stretch our bodies out from a, uh, from a good night's rest. But what if we had that same perception stretching out in life with God? Standing on the cusp, the purposes of the unknown, and being so afraid of what we don't know, but still taking a step because faith doesn't have to give us an explanation and it doesn't make sense. And we believe that God will do something in our lives. And if we will enlarge our house, make way with expectation that God can do something. When you feel Debbie Downer, shake Debbie off. When you feel negative Nancy, shake Nancy off. Come on, somebody, shake those people off, man. The, get on positive, get on praise, get on strength and stretch up to God and begin to stretch out. And notice in verses 3 and 4, he says, fear not. I love this because he begins to deal with shame. If we were all honest in the very private areas of our life, everyone in this room and those of us watching online, shame is massive in all of our lives. It plays a role in so much more than we want to admit. Different ways, different reasons, different levels. I get it. Different stories. But shame is powerful. Do you know that some of us are angry because we're ashamed? We're embarrassed of our family because we're ashamed. We're full of guilt and condemnation because of shame. We're totally insecure because of shame. We're upset at life because of shame. We feel slanted and jaded because of shame. We don't want to talk about issues because of shame. We are shameful, and we have that uh, uh, by life. But notice, when you and I stretch up and connect to God, then when we stretch out and connect to God, the Bible says, fear not, you will no longer live in shame. Don't be afraid. There is no more, I love this, there is no more disgrace for you. You will no longer be, uh, remember the shame of your youth. Come on, how many did stupid things as a, as a teenager? I mean, half of you are all lying, but, but I did. You don't have to remember it anymore. Jesus wants to set us free. There's freedom, City Church, when we step through and stretch out. We are free when we stretch up and stretch out. I know this is so basic, and I'm trying to make it as simple as I can. I'm not trying to dumb it down to belittle me and you. I'm just saying this is so basic, but we're challenged to do this so basic things. And Jesus wants us in our struggle Yes, it's, it's fine to be overwhelmed. It's fine to be upset. Nothing wrong with that. But at some point, begin to sing and worship God. And then when we feel that, we begin to stretch out and we step through and we begin to prepare our life for a blessing. We prepare our life for God to move, for God to do what we can't do. And when we step out, we don't have to fear. We can receive courage and all the shame that we feel can break off our lives. And we don't have to be ashamed of where we've been. We don't have to be ashamed of how we lived because now there's a new beginning when we stretch out. There's new hope when we stretch out. There's a new face when we stretch out. There's a new destiny when you stretch out. There's a new way when you stretch out. And God, I believe, is saying to us, the old church folks, he'll make a way where there is no way. He'll make a door where there is no door. He'll make a window where there is no window. If you're in darkness, he'll be the light. If you're sick, he'll be your healer. If you're alone, he'll be your companion. He will come through for you. And you and I are free when we stretch out. We are here to help you take your next steps. In closing, we're here to help you take your next steps. And this is your moment and my moment. But aren't we all so filled with trepidation when it comes to stretching out because we're afraid of being awkward and we're afraid of being uncomfortable and we just want to hide and be comfortable and not be awkward. But what if we today would say, you know what, being awkward and uncomfortable is actually a great thing because that's where God can begin to move and heal my marriage, heal my children, touch my life, move in me and do something greater than I can do on my own. I want to encourage you today, will you stretch up today? Will you stretch out today? Will you take the step with God? And this is our moment to live. This is our moment to do. I've told this story before, but I want to tell it again because I think it, it just impacted me and, and, and I want to share it again. I've been a pastor now for uh, about uh, 17 years in some capacity. I've done a lot of funerals, seen a lot of people pass away, some old, some young, some who should have never died. And the first one I ever was involved in, I, was, I, I, I got a call at the church. I was 20 years old, out of Bible school. This lady still in our church. She comes now when she can. She's physically declining. She'll be going to heaven soon, I'm sure. 
her husband had a massive heart attack and she called me and I went to the hospital. Her family hadn't arrived. It was just me, her, her husband and the nurse. I had arrived after they were doing the shock treatment to get his heart back. His shirt was ripped open. I came in the emergency room where they were and I saw like on TV, the monitor, monitoring his heartbeat as it goes up, making the sound. I prayed with her, prayed with him, walked back to the doorway to see if anything else was coming in. And I looked back and as soon as I did, he flatlined and he died. Like the machine on TV, the heart stopped and it just flatlined. It was me, Luzetta, Marvin, the nurse. I wish you could have all seen it because this woman, a simple life, no glamour, uh, not famous. You don't, I mean, most of you don't even know her. Uh, she won't be known, uh, you know, as she lives her life, but heaven knows who she is. And, and, I'm, and I'm saying, folks, in milliseconds, I'm talking milliseconds, as, she, as, that, as that man flatlined, she draped herself on her husband, put her, she turned her head, I'll never forget it, she put her ear right on his chest, and the first thing she said was, thank you, Jesus, for 45 years. And then she began to praise God. Thank you for my husband. Thank you for my kids. Thank you for my grandkids. Thank you for our life together. Jesus, I praise you. Jesus, I worship you. Jesus, so the nurse began to weep. She turned around. The nurse sobbed, facing the wall. And I just was standing there just watching this woman teach me faith. I'm, I'm the preacher, and she's teaching me about faith. But in her worst day, in the day of her greatest loss, in the day of feeling overwhelming strength, struggle, she immediately, her first reaction was to stretch up and thank God for the years and thank God for the family and thank God for the kids and the grandkids. And she began to worship God and touched, and it touched me and it touched the nurse and I know it touched heaven. And man, what an example to us today that folks, we don't do this when we feel it. We don't do this when God gives us everything we want. We worship when we're stuck. We worship when we're sad. We worship when we're mad. We worship when we don't understand. We worship in the, in the midst of death. We worship in the midst of loss. We worship in grief. We stretch up because he's our anchor. We stretch up because he's our source. We stretch up because he's our rock. We stretch up because he's our God. We stretch up because he's good. He's good. And his mercy endureth forever. And so I want to challenge you today. I saw this woman do it. And man, it changed my life. And it, and it made me understand like this, man, I want to be with God. My grandmother, when she was dying in oxygen mask, we were singing in the, ho or, or me, in the hospital room, singing praises to God. She was singing with oxygen mask, just singing her heart out. Lord, you know, I mean, singing all these songs of Jesus and nurses were coming in. They would weep and cry because they saw this woman getting ready to transition. And she was worshiping, stretching up. Folks, stretch up. Stretch up when life is good and stretch up when life is bad. Let Jesus have your heart. And when you stretch up, he comes to you. Then you stretch out and you defeat fear. You defeat shame. You defeat all the sorrow. You defeat all against you because God is greater. And it is real, but God is greater. It's painful, but God is greater. It's hurtful, but God is greater. It's sad, but God is greater. And you get through it. You don't run from it. You get through it. And you get stronger. And you get better. And you get closer to God. And you overcome that which is trying to overcome you. Stretch out. If you believe in this Jesus today, let's stand to our feet and give him a great rousing praise. He deserves everything we have. Every day we live. Every day we live. Every day we live. Every day. Go ahead and bow your head if you don't mind in this moment. I pray that you and I both would have the strength and the fortitude to stretch up. And I know some of us are going through horrible things. We're upset. We're hurt. Man, we're mangled in the inside. And I get it. And I would still pray that you, would, that you and I would reach up. We would sing. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all day long. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because he's free. I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he's watching me. I sing because God is my friend and my rock. I sing because he's been good to me. And I stretch out because I want to be set free. I stretch out because I want shame to break off my life. I stretch out and I overcome what's holding me back. And I'm starting to walk by faith and I prepare 
place for God to move. As your head is bowed today, we want to help you take your next step to being at worship experiences, life groups, build, whatever it is, we are, we're here to help you. But right now in this moment, you would say, Pastor David, I want to receive Jesus. I, I want to ask Jesus in my heart. I want to ask Jesus in my life. I want to be a child of God, and I want him to live in me by the Holy Spirit. And folks, he won't leave you on your best day. He won't leave you on your worst day. He'll be with you. He'll cry with you. He'll laugh with you. He'll help you through this quagmire called life he will be the rock that you need. And you say, Pastor Dave, I want him today. Or you would say, I have done that before, but I want to be closer to God because I'm not right now. And I want to be again. If that's you and you want Jesus for the first time or to be close with God, right now, stretch your hand up. Right now, I want to pray for you to come to Jesus. God bless you today. God bless you today. God bless you. 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 God see you. God bless you. Love it. Love it. God bless you. Seven people coming to Jesus today. Isn't that awesome? Now, by your head a little bit longer, I'm going to raise my hand because I need courage to do this myself. I'm not preaching to you. I'm talking with you. I need to prepare a place for God to move in my life. And you would say, Pastor Dave, I want the courage to stretch up on my worst day. I want the courage to stretch up when I feel it and when I don't. I want the courage to stretch out and prepare for God to move. And I want the courage to break off shame, break off fear, be who God wants me to be and live in the moment. If that's you today and you want support to stretch up and stretch out, raise your hand right now in this moment, please. I want to pray for you today. God bless you. Hands up everywhere. Thank you so much. Follow me in this prayer online and in this room. And please say, Lord Jesus, my heart is yours and I give myself to you. Please forgive me for anything wrong. I choose you and I want you. Give me the courage the Holy Spirit to stretch up when I feel it and when I don't. Give me the courage to stretch out, to prepare for you to move. I conquer fear. I conquer shame. I'm in you, my Lord and my King. In Jesus' name. Before I lead you in response time, I want to encourage you to worship with Pastor Renee and Bruce and sing with them as they sing, I give myself away. And let's let this be our song today.
stretch up, stretch out. Our moment is now. Let the prayer team join me here at the altar. We're going to take about five or six minutes and respond to God. If you're new, we let you respond to God as you feel comfortable and as you feel led. And so if, if you receive Jesus today, I want to encourage you to come down. I want to give you one of these Bibles and help you walk this out every day that you live. If you raise your hand to respond to the message today and you and you want prayer for that or you want prayer for something totally different, that's fine. Come down and you know, we'll pray with you and serve you. Um, if you want to take communion, you're more than welcome to. It's in the back and it's in the front. And you can do it uh, on the side aisles. If you want prayer, come in the middle aisle. If you want to sit in your seat and just listen to them worship or sing with them, that's fine. And then they'll dismiss us here in about five minutes or so. And we'll have a great weekend. Now for the blessing. May the Lord bless you. May his face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May he be good to you. May the Lord give you his peace. And for this message, may he give us the courage to stretch up and to stretch out. Connecting to God in our struggle. And stretching out to prepare for you to move, God. And overcome fear and shame. And have new beginnings. In Jesus' name, let's respond to God.